good morning, everybody. It's time again for a city update, and I'm here with Mayor Flynn. Good morning. Good morning. You know, let's remind everybody uh, that if you're watching this and you understand that in with Flynn means the mayor's rap from history, yeah. please tell all your friends because I've actually had some folks say to me, what happened to the mayor? <laughs> Nothing happened to the mayor. He's here every month without okay. fail. So at any rate, we have a very busy, uh, the activity starting, isn't it? Yeah, I think it has to do with the weather getting warmer. You know, spring is here. Yeah. And uh, man, there's a lot of things going on. Yeah. Why don't you start and tell us what's happening in the next, well, this week. Yeah. Well, this Sunday uh, is the first day for the farmer's market. And it's going to be at the parking lot, I believe, the west side of uh, Mercy Clinic over on Mercy Way and it's uh, this year it's going to be 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Sunday so starting April 23 <clears throat> and we have a new manager yes uh, Becky Parmalee who I understand you're gonna have a show with her so that's great she's, she's got a, right after you today yeah she's got a lot of energy and uh, I feel very good about the uh, farmers market this year I think it's going to be great so that's exciting but then right after that, the next day, Monday, April 24, is the uh, ribbon cutting for the new uh, public safety building. Mm -hmm. It has the police and the dispatch and the court and... Uh, City Council. Yeah, and that's exciting <laughs> yeah. uh, because it's, uh, you know, the most dynamic building certainly that uh, Bella Vista has over. ever had, and I think it's going to be for many years to come. It's yeah. really terrific. It's over on Forest Hills Boulevard, and that's at 9 a.m. on Monday, uh, April 24. Okay. So uh, then after that, uh, on Thursday, April 27, we have the sculpture installation on Bluebird Trail. We have three sculptures being installed there. Mm -hmm. And I know you're familiar with that, JB, from the uh, Arts Council. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's at 10 a.m. And the artists are going to be there. So uh, they're all from out of town. So it's, it's uh, going to be pretty dynamic. Bluebird Trail is, uh, some people call it Berksdale West. Mm -hmm. You know, it's on Reardon Road. And if you go over where the new fat tire is, look out the backyard there, you can see the trail and where the... Uh, where the three sculptures are going to be. You know, it's a, a yet another, and I'm glad we're all, as a community, heading this way. It's another um, joint effort of the POA and the city. Yeah. Because the POA actually uh, owns that park, mm -hmm. but they're on board with the city. And, yeah, and those are things. Those are all rentals for a whole year. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So that they'll change out. That way it, it keeps the cost down also. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, we have a great relationship with the POA and working with Tom Judson has just been great. And uh, I'm really excited about the things we can do together. You know, there's been a lot of cooperation for a long time between the city and the POA. And I think it's just getting stronger and stronger, better and better over time. But you're right, that is a good example of it. Well, and also, so. I know, I don't know who from the city, but I know Tom and uh, the, the POA, the city, the ACC, and the homeowners, uh, excuse me, the, uh, what do you call the, um, not the homeowners association, but the actual, the condo committee. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is a committee that's meeting, I think, now quarterly mm -hmm. to work on things together. Yeah. To try to get all of us speaking the same language. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, that to have the cooperation, people working together and knowing what each other is doing. So yeah, it's a pretty pretty cool uh, idea. Because as you were saying the other night in the city council meeting, or the work session, um, well, I think it was Jason, the attorney was actually explaining this a little bit. It is not an easy concept to understand how Bella Vista works, but by these joint committees and things that you're about to put in place, um, it's going to be as easy as it can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I know you guys at the TV station have worked hard to kind of get the word out on how everything fits together and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, so people have a little more understanding of what the ACC does and the POA and the city. So 
we appreciate your efforts in that regard. Well, it's all about all of us here in, Be in Bella Vista. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, what else is going on? Well, I, we've got the Peddler's Pub Bike Race, and that's Saturday, April 29, and that's 8 a.m. I haven't listed as 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., but it's on the back 40 and Little Sugar, and it's 42 miles. So there's quite a few bike races actually coming up in the future and, you know, golf tournaments and that's almost right. too many to list. There's so many, but uh, that's one I wanted to mention it's because it's coming up so soon. And, like uh, along with that, you know, the Gear Garden is opening. Yeah. The 21st, 22nd, 23rd, grand opening and yeah. welcoming all those uh, bikers before the race gets started. Well, not before, but about a week before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's another important thing for the trails. Yeah. Yeah. And actually that whole area around Blowing Springs, I think it's always been a really neat area, even historically. It goes way back. And, but... Uh, People are just starting to discover it, you know, there's trails over there and there's the camping and the, the RV park and whatnot. And I actually have heard recently from realtors that that's one of the hottest areas real estate wise in Bella Vista, anywhere around Blowing Springs there. It, it's a beautiful area, very wooded and whatnot. And, but there's more and more activities around there and, uh, it's uh, exciting to see Bella Vista doing so well and, and you know, having an area like that. Absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. And didn't the farmer's market historically, a long time ago, didn't they operate down in that area? Uh, as far as I know, the first farmer's market we had was in Mercy, where it's going oh, now. Oh, okay. But yeah. I don't, I'm probably confused. And then confused. for a while it was in the parking lot uh, uh, over where Allen's is mm -hmm. and then uh, for a few years, it was over on the, uh, you know, the west side, uh, near where, uh, the, well, the old court is, where Duffers is, yeah. And now they're back over by Mercy. But uh, Becky can tell you more about that. She's got some ideas for the she future does. also. Well, that kind of takes care of April, sort of, because there's a lot of other things going on. Yeah. But um, so what about May? I think there's some things coming up in early May as well. Yeah. Uh, National Music Week is May 7 to 14, and they've got a, a music-related activity just about every day that week. But uh, on in particular, on Tuesday, May 9, we're going to have a proclamation at, at Cooper Chapel, and, uh, and there's going to be a concert in there. And that's such a nice, such a beautiful place, and the uh, acoustics are so good in there. It's mm -hmm. always fun when they have something in you there. You can't even whisper in there without being heard. Yeah, so <laughs> it's really a, a great asset for so the, the community. The proclamation is declaring it Music Week? Yeah, and just, yeah, just a proclamation naming National Music Week and calling it people's attention. Okay. So, yeah. And I think you had another uh, week that comes up in May, National Police Week. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we're, I, we may bring that up here in a few minutes, but we might close the show out with that. Yeah. Uh, because the Benton County um, actually uh, there we go. Oh, Anne, you're amazing. I appreciate you so much. Absolutely. Uh, Benton County mm -hmm. uh, is actually trying, and the SALT board, and the SALT board is what? It's seniors, uh, seniors and, and law, law enforcement, enforcement. Yeah. something. Yeah. Um, together. Yeah. That's what it is. That's right. And they are assembling um, snack baskets mm -hmm. to be delivered during uh, this National Police Week. Uh, to all law enforcement and support staff uh, throughout Benton County. Yeah. And you can contribute, anybody can contribute, by either mailing, uh, um, you can do a Walmart card, you can do cash, you can do whatever, to the sheriff's office, uh, or uh, you can drop it by the jail. Even the jail collects for, yeah. you know, somebody's yeah. there all the time. And they're trying to get their funds together actually by May the 1st. It's oh, okay. a little late, yeah. but know that we do need to support Benton County and our law enforcement, not just Bella Vista, but the whole thing. Sure, that's right. So, uh, yeah, I understand it's something like 17 locations. Absolutely. So, and yeah. I don't know where they are, but just think how those snack baskets will be received. Yeah, yeah, that's so. right. It's nice to for people to know that they're appreciated, right? And, Thank you so yeah. much for, for reminding me about that. So, 
All right, so let's talk about, let's first of all, because this is the top on everybody's mind, talk to us quickly about the bridge update. Do we have a date? Oh, sure. Yeah, the, well, the bridge over by uh, Mercy Way, uh, they've been making good progress on that, and uh, they're hoping to be done in July, but I've been given a date now of August 7, and they're hoping to uh, maybe make some time up even be sooner than that, but we're saying August 7 will be the completion date for that. And that's going to make that bridge four lanes instead of two, but maybe more importantly, or as importantly, it's going to have uh, a place for pedestrians and a place for bikes. Because, you know, the current bridge, if you try to walk across it, there's really no room. Mm -mm. <laughs> and there's cars coming in both lanes, and you're kind of smushed over against the, the uh, edge of the bridge. So I think that's an improvement that's really needed, especially the way that area is. You know, the trail's going to come through there across the bridge there for bikes, and I think it's going to encourage pedestrians also because, you know, the elementary school's there, and there's places to shop. And farmer's the market. Shopping center and farmer's <laughs> market, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot going on there, and I think that's going to be a, a nice addition. You know, it's funny, that has taken so long, and we got a lot of grants uh, federal and from Walton Foundation, but um, literally I've been on city council eight years and we've been talking about that and voting on that project that whole time. Yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like I voted yes probably five or six times on that. <laughs> it keeps coming up. And, <laughs> yeah. But I think we're finally going to get there. And Dogwood kind of too. Let's talk about Dogwood real quick. Yeah, Dogwood Drive. I know people are interested in that, you know, because of the flooding. It got knocked out of commission, I want to say April 2022. Feels longer than that anyway. And some of the folks live around there really miss that, particularly in winter, I guess. Uh, you know, some of the roads are kind of steep, and if you can go the other way on Dogwood, it's a little easier. But uh, we do have a, a project in place now to complete that, and they're saying 75 days. So From uh, when? Uh, from when they start, which they're just about to. They're just to. about to start. So okay. you're talking being done in, in the summer, and that's repairing that road so Dogwood Drive will be a through road again. I, and I think a lot of people locally will be happy about that. Absolutely. And, of course, that's real close to the, some of the bridge work that's going on. I think that other bridge work with this, which the state is doing on Lancashire be more like the end of the year. They've got a ways to go. I can actually see the one bridge, the bigger bridge, outside my window. Yeah. <laughs> my office is over there. So. <laughs> That's right. So they're making progress, but they have ways they work? to go. Yeah. There never seems to be anybody working during the day, but you come the next morning, they must work at night. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah it's, uh, some people have noticed it's been a little sporadic, and I think there's different reasons for that. You know, that like a lot of things, they had some supply chain challenges at times and yeah. things like that. So. Yeah. Well, we let's talk about fire station number one rehab. Yeah. Now that the police have moved out and they're in their new location, um, we're uh, taking the old building. We have an architectural firm called Jackson Brown and Pocalect, and they're out of Little Rock, and they specialize in fire buildings, fire stations and whatnot. So they have a lot of, there's a lot of subtleties to it, the best way to do it. So the two stories where the police were, they are putting uh, the daytime living on the upper level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have a kitchen and place to hang out and things like that. And the sleeping on the lower level, that way when there's things in the middle of the night, fires or ambulance, which of course does occur, you're on the same level as the fire trucks and the ambulances, and it's easier to, you know, you're asleep and now you're woke up and need to go do something quickly. It's much easier to be on that first floor and get right out. Darn it, no more going. poles. You never had a pole in the first yeah. place, but <laughs> <laughs> you see pictures of firemen yeah, coming from down the, the old poles. Days, yeah. right. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's, uh, I, I saw some preliminary drawings and it's really pretty exciting the way it's going to be so much better. For, well, first of all, you'll be able to drive around back and drive straight in, which all the new fire stations can do. So that was a big thing. Uh, and what they're doing is they're fixing those two stories for the living quarters. And then, uh, you know, people don't think about this, but fire, uh, uh, firemen and women are on 48 hours and off 96. 
Mm. So you're really living together for mm -hmm. 48 hours on. And, uh, you know, so they really need a good setup because they're in there a lot, right? And uh, so they've got those two stories for the living area. And then they're making the offices for the fire chief and some of the other, because that's our headquarters also, is going to be right in front of that, out front. Good. Then the second phase, right now we have three bays. We're actually going to have five bays. We're going to add two more, and they're going to be longer so they can accommodate uh, the bigger fire trucks. We're going to have a ladder truck at that location. And... Uh, so that's going to be really good. And then in the very last phase, they're going to uh, fix up City Hall a little bit. City Hall's over there, too. And, uh, of course, I went out and got fancy new buildings for everybody else except us. Aww. So <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a little refurbishment, but we're taking that all in stages. And that uh, the new area for the fire firemen was really important because it, it was very inadequate. So what, so what do you think the timing is on that, like, the end of the phase, you know, when do you oh, think? Oh, I think even the first phase is going to be probably the rest of this year. Okay. Maybe even drip in past that a little bit. Gotcha. So, yeah. Gotcha. Well, that's exciting. It really, really is. Um, well, let's talk a little bit. We haven't had the city council meeting this month yet, but we've had work sessions and other things going on. Yeah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about, would, would you remind folks that that building is kind of new and that the hearing and seeing is going to get better? Can you talk about oh, that? Oh, yeah. Well, it, yeah, in the new public safety building, that's where City Council and Planning Commission meet now. It's in the uh, court. And uh, one of the things that isn't complete is the whole new sound system. Uh, all the things weren't in, and I think that that's going to be June at the earliest. It, and so what we did is we brought in microphones and whatnot for uh, temporary, but some of the, and it's a very tall ceiling in there also. It's a nice big room. But some of the folks, when they go to the meetings, struggle a little bit to hear, mm -hmm. especially if you don't sit up close, if you sit a little further back. It's, it's a lot of space to fill, you know. That's right. And I think the real sound system is going to be great, but uh, the temporary one, some folks have struggled a little bit with it. So. Well, and I understand, because I see the wires hanging from the ceiling, that there will also be two big TV screens there for the folks to see closer and for you to do presentations yeah. on and that sort of thing. Yeah. So Yeah, it's not really set up really good for presentations yet, but the final product I think will be really good. Yes. Audio visual, so to speak. Exactly. And that actually reminds me of something else. You know, when we moved into the new public safety building, there was a tremendous amount of work in the uh, information technology area. And we had a two man uh, department for IT and we did add a third person in early March but those folks worked so hard yeah. trying to get everything ready and you know some of the things were really crucial like uh, dispatch <laughs> you know when you're cutting over from the old place to the new it, it was a big challenge to make sure it was seamless because it's a safety issue you know people want to call in people are calling in to get an ambulance uh, speaking of that whole issue of ambulances, I'm rambling today. No, bit, you're you're fine. But uh, the uh, the other day, the fire chief was in my office, and it was 11:30 a.m., just routine weekday, and he had his phone with them. And at that very time, there were five ambulance calls. No. Yeah, at one time. So it's amazing how busy they are, and how much you know. There's only a few fires. But there's a lot of ambulance, a lot of ambulance uh, work going on, and uh, it's amazing how busy they can be. You know, those guys are incredible. Um, my my hubby uh, has had some health issues over the last few months, and I swear I know all those EMT guys' names by heart. But they are Johnny on the spot, and they're wonderful. They really yeah. are. So I mean, all your staff is. They're they're dedicated. They're. Uh, working for the good of all in spite of what sometimes people think. Yeah, yeah, um, we do get a lot of positive feedback on the police and the fire in yes. particular, but yeah, you know, for me coming in new, it was interesting to, you know, being the new mayor to see how things are, and I've been very pleased with the workforce and their dedication level. It's very encouraging, and in particular, 
the top level supervisors and whatnot mm -hmm. were experienced and strong, and that really helps when you're coming in new and you know trying to run things. They have good people. So. Uh, I noticed the other night uh, your um, financial lady, Kim Hall, uh, was giving a nice layman's version mm -hmm. because you don't need it because you're a financial guy. But yeah. that was really nice of her to help explain how to read balance statements and financials to the city on what to look for. Because mm -hmm. government, city government financial is different. Everything is. But yeah. if you're familiar with what you're looking for and what to make decisions on, that was, mm -hmm. that was a very good thing. Yeah, I thought that was nice because uh, we do have some new people on council. And even some of the people have been around a while, it, it's good to give a reminder and you know, what are the best things to look at on the balance sheet, income statement, whatnot. I thought that was helpful that you did that. So, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, another couple of things you're doing, you're, um, I, I really love the idea that you guys are starting to set up some specific committees to research some of the issues that really need looking at, like the streets, mm -hmm. the 14 miles of streets that's probably going to take seven years to complete. Yeah. Talk about that yeah. a little. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I brought up a couple issues to the city council, and they indicated they'd like to have some subcommittees, so to speak, to, to work on those. And uh, we pretty much decided the other day that we were going to have a couple. We, we've always had a committee on the streets mm -hmm. in particular, but uh, I was chairman of it for eight years, so we need to get some city council, new city council people in there. and. Uh, they, the streets have a particular challenge now because there's been so much new growth, and so they're starting to build houses in more and more obscure locations. And so we made a list and found that there's 14 miles of streets where there's new houses, not just houses, but new houses, and they're not paved. And it, you know the list is growing and growing. And uh, the, you know, the other day we got a bid on paving for the year. We always get bids for the year. And it was better than we expected. But it's still $134,000 a mile. Wow. So we have all our regular paving to do, plus it's 14 miles. And, and it's growing. Yeah. <laughs> and they were estimating maybe $3 million for all of that, in addition to what we usually do. So that's the challenge for that committee is to figure out how to attack that and how to work through it. So what we did in the short term, what I did in the short term, is we're going to put on two miles every year mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, pave the existing areas but also start cutting into that. But we need to figure out a way to do it faster than that because that would take seven years and by the time you did that, there'd be more. Absolutely. <laughs> right? So you'd never really catch up. You know, somebody I'm kind of impressed with, and I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, but she's taken over for Mike, but Mike Button. Oh, yes. Uh, Karen Hunt. Is, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, we had a, uh, uh, Mike Button re retired as, uh, being, he's been over the streets for the whole time the city's done it, 11 years. And, uh, and so we promoted Karen Hunt to superintendent and also uh, Dan, uh, Bowers uh, is assistant superintendent. So uh, yeah, the two of them I'm really pleased with, and uh, she's been there the whole time, yeah. working with Mike, and really is uh, uh, shown a lot of energy and a lot of understanding of what needs to be done, what the problems are. So yeah, yeah, we're pretty happy with that uh, transition. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. I w I'm impressed with her. Knowing the answers, when you guys ask her hard questions, she knows those answers. Yeah. So yeah. that's good stuff. Uh, you know, another committee that probably is going to be long term. Oh, yeah. Is the, the other committee I meant to mention besides streets is the sewer and septic. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, right now we have 3,600 houses on sewer. And that leaves about 11, 12,000 or so that are on septic. And as we grow, we need to get more people on sewer. And of course, that's, the sewer is run by an independent nonprofit company. It's uh, Village Wastewater. And we need to figure out a way to uh, 
financially and otherwise to get more people on sewer. It's going to be a gradual thing. In fact, somebody said to me the other day they thought that's really a 20-year project. I mean, we're talking long, long term. But a couple of things happened the last few years. You know, people would say to me, gee, that's hard. Or they'd say, gee, that's going to take a long time. Well, neither of those is a good reason not to start. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. I said, we've got to get started on it and not just sit here and pretend it's going to go away because people's septics are getting older and older and, you know, and so it's something that needs to be addressed. And it's going to be a challenge for sure. But, uh, and I'm glad there was people willing to be on that committee and, and dig in and work on the problem and, and see what we can figure out. That's so. great. Um, yeah. Do you think there, I know the topography's an issue mm -hmm. for sewer, but you know, there's always, where well, there's a will, there's a way, as my yeah. grandmother used to say. Yeah. Um, but, but you're right. It's going to take a very long time to get all that happening, but let's get started. Yeah. Let's get started. It's funny you mentioned the topography, you know, that uh, topography in Bella Vista is quite challenging. As you know, it's quite beautiful also, but, uh, you see so many things where that's a challenge or a problem, like with streets, you know, and drainage issues with water and things like that. So when we got the bike trails, I thought, finally, there's something where all the hills are a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where it's better for it. Exactly. Because <laughs> people like the challenge, you know, going up and down the hills rather than just being all flat land. But, exactly. But there's a lot of ways it's a challenge for us. But you know what? Life throws challenges. and. To me, it's fun to try to address them and figure out solutions. Well, that's good because you've so got... So I've come to the right place. You've come to the right place <laughs> and you're in the right spot. And I believe you have some really good um, council people that care and are willing to work and, and help get things done. Yeah. Uh, we just have a few minutes left, but let's be sure we invite people to come to the city council meetings, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. always the fourth... Or the it's the fourth yeah. Monday every yeah. month. It starts at 6:30 mm -hmm. at the courthouse. Uh, it's really great sometimes to walk in there and see it full, even though everybody can't hear right now. At yeah. least you've got people telling you, "This is what I like. This is what can you do about this? How can I help?" Yeah. Uh, and, and and it's education because mm -hmm. a lot of people think they have the answer. But they don't understand all the all the factors that make up the issue. Sure. So yeah. uh, come and and be educated. Yeah. Um, it's important for. How's he going to know if you don't tell him? Yeah. But be nice with how you tell him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I think unless you have anything else to say for today, we can we're ready to sign off. Yeah, I think that's right. I really uh, enjoyed it as usual, and it's been great. Uh, talking to you about some of the things going on in Bella Vista. Yeah. Okay, BV, we will see you. Uh, I think the mayor won't be here next time, but we're going to have a surprise for you in his slot. So it'll be out with Flynn. You'll be doing <laughs> out. Anyway, we'll see you next month. Until then, stay tuned. BV TV thanks you so much for your support.